Hey guys, welcome to Boxing Squared for boxing news and views from around the internet. It seems these days, whenever you mention Tyson Fury, Anthony Joshua, or Deontay Wilder, you can't help but mention, you know, two of the names in the same sentence. It's hard to get away from. A lot of videos popping up on YouTube, and I'm guilty of it myself, you know, it involves these three. There's a lot of news, a lot of interest. People want to hear what's going on with these guys. And obviously Tyson Fury coming back so successfully in his comeback, although a controversial result, that has really ignited the heavyweight division. Again, it's added another dimension. It was already bubbling along quite well with Anthony Joshua and Deontay Wilder, you know, sort of manning the helm. But Fury has added another spoke to it. And previously, Joseph Parker, he'd looked to be that sort of third wheel in that equation. But he hadn't quite got to the heights that, you know, Wilder and Joshua had in terms of maybe popularity or the fights in terms of championship fights and the excitement in those fights. But Fury, Wilder and Joshua is this trio, inescapable trio that you can't get away from. And Frank Warren, he's previously claimed that Fury now, as a result of his comeback, what he's done, is bigger than Anthony Joshua in terms of an attraction, a draw. And he's made these assertions again, and in an interview, uh, in a piece that has been run on the BBC. So this is it here, Tyson Fury, a bigger draw than Anthony Joshua. Not the first time that he said that, but there's some interesting comments here that I wanted to get to. Uh, also, there's some quick fire questions which we'll talk about towards the back end of this video. But in terms of the article, he's the people's champion, Warren told BBC Sport. I think he's now a bigger attraction than Anthony Joshua. I'll stop there and interject just for a second. That sort of statement, it's a massive call. Sure, there's a lot of goodwill and buzz towards Tyson Fury right now because of his performance against Deontay Wilder. The whole backstory, two and a half years coming off the couch to almost take the WBC title back to the UK. But is he a bigger attraction than Anthony Joshua? In real terms, we're not going to be able to quantify that until Fury has a stadium fight in the UK, and then we'll sort of get an indication, you know, how much his support has improved. Because you look at, you know, what he did recently with one of his comeback fights, he was the, the headliner for that, it didn't sell out in Manchester. Sure, there was a decent enough crowd, but it wasn't a sellout. Also, we had the Wilder and Fury fight, it didn't sell out. So prior to, you know, his heroics in the ring, because we didn't know what sort of version we get of Tyson Fury, you know, there was certainly a lot of interest, but maybe certainly nowhere near the level of an Anthony Joshua. But right now it's very speculative from Frank Warren. But, you know, I do think if he has the right opponent, say Deontay Wilder, I think that could sell out a decent sized stadium in the United Kingdom. Fury, he's been talking about, and his camp, that they want to have the fight a rematch at Old Trafford. We'll have to see where that all goes, but that would be 75,000. But if is he really bigger than Anthony Joshua? Well, it's a very bold call. Is he a bigger draw? Who knows? I would say no, just because we don't have enough evidence and data points to support that. Sure, there's a lot of goodwill, but there's a lot of goodwill from Anthony Joshua's fans towards Tyson Fury as well. I mean, you don't have to be a, fight, a fan of just one fighter. And this is one of the things about YouTube that I, you know, I don't get. Why can't you like all of these fighters? I mean, I certainly like watching them all. I don't just follow one guy and one guy only. But over to you about your preferences and who you follow and, you know, what buzz you get off watching boxing and all that sort of stuff. But in terms of the next piece, we'll pick that up. There's no corporate element with him. You don't have to go through 100 people. You just pick up the phone. He walks down the street and he hasn't got an entourage of minders. Whoever he fights next, if Tyson fights in this country, it's going to be a sellout wherever he fights. Well, I think you'd have to have the right opponent. It can't, can't just be anyone. If it was another sort of Sefa Safiri type, you know, that wouldn't be a sellout. That'd be a massive disappointment. But I think if it's not Wilder, because I think a Wilder fight sells out in the United Kingdom in a decent sized stadium. But if it's not Wilder, it's going to have to be someone at least in the top 20. And who would that be? I mean... It would have to be someone that he would be confident he could beat, get past, and look good against. But, you know, I don't actually think that's really worth going too far down the rabbit hole chasing because I think the rematch is the most likely option. He alludes to this as well. At the moment, I'm talking with Shelley Finkel, who looks after Wilder, and we're trying to get the rematch together. 
Uh, further down here, he speaks of Anthony Joshua. This is Frank Warren. I love Joshua as an amateur. I really like watching him. A young guy, exciting, and he seems to have reached a certain point in his career now where you can see what the flaws are. He's vulnerable. He's wobbled in most of his fights. Tyson only wants big fights. There are only two big fights out there. That's Wilder and that's Joshua. Joshua doesn't even want to fight him because I think he knows he'll get beat. And there'll certainly be a lot of people who will debate, you know, that style matchup and whether Anthony Joshua could beat the um, the boxer, Joshua being a, a sort of a puncher boxer himself. Let's get, let's get this fight made. It'd be great to see that. Um, it'd be great to see Wilder Fury rematch. It'd be great to see Wilder and Joshua. But ultimately, let's not kid ourselves, because these are the two big fights that are out there for, you know, either of these matchups, whoever, you know, whatever permutations of Joshua Wilder, Wilder Fury, all that sort of stuff, money and splits is at the heart of it, and Wilder and Fury are a lot closer to being 50-50 to each other than Joshua to the others. And that's been made loud and clear from Matchroom and Joshua himself, saying there'll be no fantasy deals. So it's going to be very hard to see um, Joshua versus the other two at this rate. And that's why I think it will be Dillian White in all likelihood for April. And they're going to have to announce that very shortly. We can't, you know, forget they're running out of runway. They're going to have to, you know, have training camps. Uh, Joshua said mid-January he'll be going into training camp. He said this a couple of months ago, and I'm sure that's still the plan. He'll be finishing his holidays, you know, social media posts. He's been all over the world and whatnot. So we'll have to see what happens next, but it will be announced very shortly his next opponent. You can bet your bottom dollar on that. I would say by the 15th of January, the 20th of January at the latest, we will know who he is fighting in April. Down here, um, it talks about Fury's got his detractors. Muhammad Ali was voted sports personality of the century years ago. He's the guy when I was a kid. Okay, well, we're not going to go into that. But, you know, there's certainly a correlation there. I mean, Muhammad Ali certainly was a controversial figure back in his heyday when he first burst onto the scene with some of the things that he said. Tyson Fury, you know, there are some parallels there. And also, we, we've seen it, you know. After his uh, win against Vladimir Klitschko, he didn't sort of get the love that he may have ex expected and wanted, but he's certainly been getting his fill of it after the Deontay Wilder draw, the sort of comeback, the story, the mental health issues, overcoming the odds, all that sort of stuff. So there are some parallels in terms of the story there, which obviously Frank Warren is trying to sort of talk up there. Uh, on the quick fire stuff, Warren on Fury versus Joshua. Where and when would you like to see a potential Fury Joshua fight taking place? In the UK, you could go to Cardiff. They have a roof on the stadium. That should be summer outdoors at a football stadium and would sell out 10 times over. Yeah, I have no doubt about that. And he sort of comes to this uh, that a bit in the next bit. It would grip the country. One of those events that transcends the back pages. Everybody would be talking about it. And I think there's no doubt that would be one of the biggest fights in British history, if not, you know, certainly at heavyweight, the biggest uh, of all time. Uh, if you can sell it 10 times over, won't some fight fans be priced out of tickets? Uh, it will be a pay-per-view event because the fighters will want to maximize their income. It's very easy, this fight. When I say 50-50, let Sky and BT Box Office both have it. Take all the obstacles away like they do in the States. The fans want the fight. If both TV channels are showing it, that means the boxers' incomes are going to be more. It's a no-brainer. Yeah, I mean, that's a very simple solution. But in terms of the reality of it all, can you see BT or Sky really wanting to sort of, you know, sort of slice their own lunch here and give it to someone else? I just can't see it. They're going to want to clip the ticket on every pay-per-view buy that they can for a fight of that magnitude. And I think, you know, that example that he uses of the United States one, it's not completely like for like. The numbers would have been much smaller. Yeah, I just don't quite think it's as easy as Frank Warren states, but that certainly would be a solution. You know, if they really wanted to make the fight, if they could come to that sort of arrangement, that would be great. You know, people can just choose where they buy it, but I can't see it. And I'm pretty sure that Anthony Joshua's contract would uh, prohibit that anyway. And potentially so too would Tyson Fury's, you know, he's a BT fighter now. Those sorts of obstacles, it's, you know, it's a bit, there's a, a few more threads to it than Frank Warren is alluding there. Uh, the negotiations are going to be difficult, aren't they? You and the Hearns have a bit of history. Anthony Joshua is a business. He makes money. It doesn't matter who he fights, they can fill up Wembley. 
They have a seven year business plan which is filling up Wembley twice a year and it's a cash cow. I get that. Barry is an accountant by trade. That's not what the fans want. Yeah, and I have some sympathy there. Barry Hearn always sounds uh, very clinical that it's all about business rather than the actual boxing and what fight fans want. And to a degree, boxing, it's a sport masquerade. It, it's a business masquerading as a sport. So I totally get what Frank Warren is saying there. And there has been a, a growing sentiment among some fans that, you know, these some of these business considerations and some of the business elements are becoming a bit too prominent in Team Joshua with Matchroom making it a bit too overt that it's all about money. And if we never get some of these big fights, you know, because of money, it's going to be we're going to be the poorer for it as fans that's just a fact and it's not all on the anthony joshua side it's also on the other you know with fury and wilder i mean they want an equal cut of the pie with a fight with anthony joshua the commercial reality is that you know they probably don't warrant it at this point but we need to see some other fights some other numbers to really know how it all squares up but even then you know we don't we're not privy to all the numbers here so we're never really going to know but barry hearn and eddie hearn they certainly know what joshua is doing down to the last cent so this is why they're you know holding firm on the snow fantasy deals all that sort of stuff but you know at the end of the day you know i can see why joshua wants his money and he's the a side and all this sort of stuff commercially but you know i want to see the fights i don't really care so much about how much they make you know i can understand you know how they make it and why they want their bigger cut of the pie i just want to see the fight at the end of the day and you know i will certainly be a bit bitter and twisted um towards you know all these guys if they don't get it made because at the end of the day it's not never just one side there's going to have to be some give and some wriggle you know from all sides involved here but you know some of the broadcasting issues it's not so much of an issue for deontay wilder but certainly for a domestic fighter like Tyson Fury with the BT deal he's got in place and Anthony Joshua Sky commitments, yeah, I can't really see it being shown on, being simulcast on two channels, two pay-per-view platforms at once. I like the idea of that just because if that was a solution, you know, but if they if it was easy to do, they probably would have worked it out by now. Or we would have seen it before. I mean, have we ever heard of this before? Not really. I mean, certainly in the United States, it's a bit of a different market. And it's come down to, you know, deals that they've made between the two about what they're doing when they're broadcasting and other bits and pieces. So, it's yeah, it's not quite like for like, but yeah, I can't see it. But anyway, Frank Warren, certainly he always gives an interesting take on things. So it'll be interesting to see, you know, if Tyson Fury can get that rematch in the UK or get the next fight that he has in the UK, if that's not Wilder, what is his actual commercial pulling power in terms of, you know, a stadium fight now that he's coming off the, potentially you could say it's the biggest result of his career in terms of profile. The Klitschko win, that is the best victory in term of his career in terms of performance-wise. But this uh, Wilder draw, certainly the profile-wise, winning hearts and minds, the comeback, all that sort of stuff, it's really been immense for him. Anyway, drop a comment, loud and often. Hit like, hit subscribe, follow me on Twitter, boxing underscore squared. I'm out.